Lai's father to call this uh, meeting or this council meeting so quickly. He never even asked me. All right. So Nithilai gets angry. She, she says that my father is not to blame. Don't blame my father. All right. Do you know why he did that? It is because you know we belong to two different castes, and the tribal people they do not. Um, trust this brahmin high caste men because they believe that these men are interested in their women only to you know have uh, sexual relationships with them uh, they do not want to marry these women so he is also afraid that something similar will happen to his daughter that you know his uh, this aravasu might take advantage of her and not end up marrying her that's why as soon as he found out about their relationship he calls a council to make sure that they're uh, um, they are legally uh, united in marriage all right um so they are very happy at this point all right and that is when andaka says that um, yavaraki wants to meet uh, aravasu and aravasu says that yes yeah i also got a message from him that you know to meet at that particular place uh, when the sun is um, at the high point okay so right at noon he has asked uh, aravasu to meet him at a point all right um so aravasu is con uh, nithila is confused she is very uh, you know uh, anxious because this is the day when aravasu is supposed to meet the elders of the village and he cannot be late so she is like uh, why couldn't yavaraki meet us here we are standing in his hermitage right why does he we have why does he have to call you somewhere else so that is when andaka says that you know yavaraki gets no peace here so yavaraki's character is still an enigma for us but we get to know that you know he is uh, he has talked to god okay he has talked to god lord indra so there are many people who keep coming here to meet him to ask him how he got to talk to indra what indra looks like what austerities or what were the practices what penance did he do what hymns he sang what mantras he chanted so he has ceaseless visitors here and that's why he never likes to sit here okay so um you know that is when uh, aravasu says see uh, it's not a joking matter so it seems like nitilai does not trust uh, you know yavaraki's penance so much she seems to be doubtful of his ideas and here we get a very very important perspective about uh, the difference in perspective between these brahmins and these tribal people okay so uh, andaka tells her that you know he did 10 years of religious rigorous penance in the forest he stood there in the middle of a circle of fire and it's only when he started offering his body parts to the fire that lord indra came in front of him and granted him what he asked for what did he ask for knowledge of the universe okay so nithila still feels very weird okay did he tell you all this that this happened so uh, andaka says that no you know no no great man is going to talk about themselves in this manner so nithila is again confused if he did not say all this himself how does everyone seems to know about it it happened in a remote corner of the jungle so how do you know what happened right so that is a very very uh, very logical question that she is asking but you know they are the um, andaka and aravasu are so blinded by their devotion um, and their practices and their meaningless rituals that uh, they do not seem to question uh, any of these uh, things that you know um, nithila is questioning okay so uh, he says that andaka at that point says that you know every brahmin on the face of this earth wants to gain spiritual powers that is that is their need all right but only a few succeed in my lifetime he says he has only known two uh, great men who had a lot of knowledge about the universe and these two great men were um, you know uh, aravasu's father and his uncle that means aravasu's father and yavaraki's father but they got their knowledge from human gurus they they went to gurus they they read the sacred text so it was years and years of hard work for them to gain that knowledge through human means but yavaraki did not want all that he wanted to go beyond all that and that's why he want to receive the knowledge directly from the god all right and his uncle uh, aravasu's uncle or yavaraki's father was doubtful he did not want his son to do all that okay but his son did not listen and he went away and this man uh, yavaraki's father he died of a broken heart when his son failed to return all right so that's why you know uh, he, uh, Ana, andaka is been waiting at this hermitage for yavaraki to return because he knew that yavaraki had the power and he would gain the knowledge and he would return some day all right and now the whole world who doubted him is now 
worshipping his feet. So again, but still Nithila is not convinced. She asks, what I want to know is, why are Brahmins so secretive about everything? Why are so Brahmin? Why are they secretive? All right. So uh, uh, she asks, is, you know, uh, all their fire sacrifices, whatever yagna and pujas they do, they are in covered enclosures. Moody Betsy Vichirikina, Salangal Lana. Not everyone is allowed to enter there and watch the proceedings. So they're always in covered enclosures. Okay. Uh, when they go to do penance, they go into the jungles where no one else is there to watch them. Okay, even the gods, when they appear before him, them they appear so secretly. Sometimes they appear in disguise. Vesha Mari Arikin Devangal Allengil, they will appear only to that particular person. No one else knows what happened, but only this person who has experienced this will know. All right. So why? What are they afraid of? What are these gods afraid of? Why don't they come and come before everyone? Okay, and she says, now this is where the chief difference between their tribe comes. Okay, she says, in my tribe, uh, you know, the priest who is doing such a sacrifice or who is doing such a penance will announce to the entire village that, you know, he will be doing this particular puja at this particular time and everyone from the village will come and watch. And, uh, you know, their tribe is different because the spirit of the God comes and enters into the priest's body and that body with the spirit of the god will answer the question of the people all right so andaka is now scared he says take care child the gods that their priests seek are far mightier than yours so you know the brahmin gods are much more mightier than your tribal gods you should not talk about both of them in the same sentence or in the same breath do not talk about them together because the brahmin gods are much more powerful in the parainu Okay. So, Nathalai says that, fine, I don't care. But my point is that since Lord Indra appeared to Yavaraki, and Indra is the god of rains, right? Yavaraki is the god of rains, Lord Indra is the god of rains. Rain into God. He is the rain God. Right? So why didn't Yavaraki ask him for rain? It had been 10 years since his land had seen a drop of rain. For 7 years his cousin brother is sitting at a yagna. Did not he see that the region around the village was completely burning with the heat? It was parched. There was not a drop of water. Every morning, you know, children uh, who are shrunken and shriveled old men and women, they gather in front of Nithilai's father's house who is actually a chief uh, of the tribe, alright, so that he can give them the food that he has collected. She says there are no more young people in the tribe because most of them have disappeared. They have gone to other places in search of a better life, okay. And all that this land needs is some rain, so why would no, you not ask for rain if the god of rain is coming in front of you? Why wouldn't you ask for rain? That is something that Nethilai does not understand. So Andaka says that such powers, that means after 10 years of penance, when God is finally coming to you, that would be too silly to ask him for rain. Okay? These type of penances are meant to let, lead to inner knowledge. Day-to-day problem solve and Allah in the Varainu. Okay. Uh, so Nithila still does not understand. Alright. So she says, What's the use of all these powers? E inner knowledge and power okay, kitty and the garyam. Avsanam, you know, the land that you are living in is dying. Everyone in, in this place is dying. What is the use of such a knowledge in the Choikinu? Okay. So Andaka says that I cannot answer that question for you. You should ask Yavaraki himself when you meet him. Okay. So Nithilai Parayanada, yes, I actually do want to ask him questions. She asks, wants to ask him two questions. Now this can come as a, uh, a separate question. What are the two questions that Nithilai asks? Two questions in the can he make it rain? What is the, that is the first question. The second question is, can he tell when he is going to die? Okay, so these are very, very important questions. Can he make it rain? Can he know the hour of his death? Alright, these are just the two questions that she wants to know because what is the point of all the knowledge that he has if he can't save the dying children who are dying without water and rain and if you can't predict your moment of death, what is the point of all the knowledge? Okay, so these are two questions. Another question that can come is um, about um, 
ఎవరికి ఈ స్పెనల్స్ ఓకే వాట్ డెడ్ హీ డూ అండ్ ఆల్ అదొరు క్వశ్చన్ ఐటి వేరా దెన్ వై ఆర్ బ్రాహ్మన్స్ సో సీక్రెటివ్ అబౌట్ ఎనీథింగ్ దట్ కెన్ ఆల్సో కమ్ యాజ్ అ షార్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ రైట్ సో దెన్ యు నో టు టు టేక్ అవే దిస్ హ్యావీనెస్ ఫ్రమ్ దేర్ అగైన్ అరవసు ఈస్ యాక్టింగ్ లైక్ అ బైసన్ సో హీ ఈస్ అ గుడ్ యాక్టర్ రైట్ అండ్ ద బ్లైండ్ అందత్ ఐస్ ఏబుల్ టు రియలైజ్ ద కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ద ద యానిమల్ దట్ హీస్ ఇమిటేటింగ్ then uh, we go on to yes uh, from that point you know the uh, aravasu and nithilai leave uh, andaka and they go in search of yavaraki and when before they go in search of yavaraki another stage comes up where uh, you know the hermitage of raibha raibhya is shown who is the father of aravasu so right now we were in the hermitage of yavaraki from there we have shifted to another space which is the hermitage of raibhya the father of aravasu all right so um, we'll uh, okay so uh, raibhya the father of aravasu um, uh, his uh, hermitage is shown and there vishakha who is actually parvasu's wife is shown all right parvasu's wife vishakha is shown she is uh, trying to gather some water in a pot when when the scene opens and uh, she looks like an attractive person but you know something but her, she is not kept well she has a very haggard uh, experience, um, expression there she uh, picks up the pot that is filled with water and she starts going back home and that's when she noticed that yavaraki is standing right in the middle of her path so that she won't be able to pass easily okay she stops but she does she avoids looking at him okay and that's when vishakha says please she stop she's not looking at him but she's just saying please and yavaraki says at last a word after waiting for four days so for four days he has been waiting at this exact spot to hear a word from vishakha why now we are confused right so it seems that vishakha and yavaraki seem to have a relationship before uh vishakha got married to parvasu okay so they were in love and they had a relationship but that is when yavaraki decided to go to the forest to do penance okay and because he was going to do penance he had to get rid of all these material things like love and family and relationships so he said goodbye to vishakha and he went away all right and obviously he was gone for 10 years with no source of communication vishakha was forced to marry parvasu all right so this dialogue that we see is you know vishakha is first trying to avoid him like the good dutiful wife that she is she reminds him that she is married that her father in law is not uh, will come tomorrow and he can talk to him directly she should not speak to strangers she keeps saying these things but yavaraki says that i have been waiting for you so for so long all right and i am hungry for some words from you and when i as soon as i came back the first news that i heard was that you were married to paravasu but uh, you know i should have expected it because it's been 10 years and that is a very very long time to be silent to be gone okay can we just talk i don't want anything else i just want to talk to you all right because 10 years ago i made a promise to you that i would not look at another woman okay that there would be no other woman in my life and he has kept this word he has never looked at another woman vishakha says that that's over and done with now i don't have to do i say anything to you please let me go but he does not all right so um, uh, then you know uh, after a while uh, uh, she uh he says that vishakha after 10 years in solitude i have been doing penance in solitude i was completely alone now i am hungry for words i want someone to talk to all right so vishakha says that with your rigorous penance you pleased lord indra himself and now you have the universal knowledge what can i say to you who have the universal knowledge i am a mere human being and all real parayam bol yavaraki says universal knowledge what a phrase okay so uh, he says that it seems so easy for you to say universal knowledge that you know i just went and stood somewhere for 10 years and the god came and gave it to me no it was 